Hey guys, it's me, it's Queen Arset Haru, and thank you for joining me for another wonderful edition of Ask an Aquarius. If you haven't already, please hit the red subscribe button and smack the bell. <laughs> All right guys, now, um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and pass it on to someone else who may like what I have to say as well or someone who may need to hear <laughs> what I have to say as well. Sometimes they may not even like it, but they may need to hear it, you know? So let's talk about a question that I got. Several people asked me this question after my video the other day on karma. I did a video, I think it's called Clean Up Your Mess, and it talks about karma. So several people said to me, that they wanted to know about the apologizing part because I said the first step in cleaning up your karma is apologizing to the people that you have hurt and you have wronged. Now, mind you, some of, these, some of the times in these cases, you might not feel like you did anything wrong. You may feel like, you know, um, what happened, you know, you may be in total denial. It might actually be something that you did wrong. You might not be certain about it. You know, it's a number of different things that can happen in this case. But the bottom line is, is that if a person feels abused by you, if they feel insulted by you, to listen to what they have to say and apologize for how you made them feel, what you did, how you showed up. You know, let's say that, you know, um, you stopped seeing one guy because you liked another guy more and the other guy feels like, you know, slighted and jaded by the way that you ended the relationship. Now, you don't think you did anything wrong. You know, you just moved on to a new relationship. But I would still say, I'm sorry that I hurt you. I'm sorry that my actions hurt you. You see? So some of the times it's not as cut and dry, <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to really think about it and be like, you know what, this person is hurt by me. So the least I can do is say that I'm sorry. So the question was, what happens if you can't tell the person you're sorry? What if the person's dead? What if the person moved away and you have no way of contacting them? What if you tried to, to reach out to them, to write them a letter and they didn't respond to you? You know, um, what do you do to get your karma going in the right direction if you can't apologize to the person or persons that you need to apologize to? Well, there are a couple, a couple different things here, right? So if you can't apologize to the person, I do something called an apology letter. Now, different people will handle this differently. I'm just going to tell you what I would do, okay? So if there was a person that I needed to apologize to that I could not get to, they're, they're dead and gone or whatever the case is, I would write them a letter. And in this letter, I would say everything I wanted to say. I would apologize. I would pour my heart, my emotions, my anger, my frustrations. That letter might be eight or nine pages long. <laughs> okay. I would write one hell of a letter and I would put all that emotion into that letter. And I would apologize to this person and let them know that from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely apologize for what I had done. And I can't contact you in the physical sense, but at least emotionally and spiritually, I can offer you this um, apology. And then what I would do is I would take the letter. I would burn the letter. You know, I would get a fire safe dish, a pot or something, and I would burn the letter. And on the full moon, I would release the ashes of the letter out the window. What does this do? Well, you've gotten the emotion out, you've said what you've had to say, and now you're releasing it. You're not going to hold on to it. You're not going to, you know, hold on to the hurt, you know, on your end. You can't do anything else. It's time to let it go. So for, for me, I've recommended this to a lot of people who wanted closure with a person that they couldn't speak to because it's a great way to apologize and to release the energy. A lot of times, if you are in this situation and you need to apologize to somebody you can't apologize to, a lot of times you hold on to that hurt 
you hold on to it and it causes blockages in your emotions you know a lot of us will hold on to that kind of energy so this particular ritual which is very common actually um I don't know where I got the idea from. I think I might have read it in a spell book or something somewhere. And it made perfect sense to me that it would work spiritually and emotionally. Even if a person wasn't into, you know, uh, spirituality, witchcraft or, you know, priestess work, you know, something like this is still like more of like a therapeutic exercise in that sense, you know, because you're emotionally getting out all your feelings through the writing of the letter. And the burning part is just you symbolically releasing it. It's just exactly the same kind of energy as when we would do it in witchcraft. You're symbolically releasing the energy you know, to heaven, to, you know, to the angels, <laughs> you know, you're letting it go. So that's what I would recommend. I would recommend the apology letter, especially if the person is gone. Now you can do this one or you can create your own ritual. You know, let's say the person is dead. You can go to their grave and you can leave, you know, flowers or you can leave. A, a lot of us leave rum. We leave, you know, uh, rum or we leave something that the person liked in life. You know, these are kind of like offerings that we would give to spirits, you know, but it's the same kind of energy. You know, you give them something that they may have liked in life. You know, um, you see it in a lot of movies. I was watching um, Creed and Rocky Balboa left his um, best friend uh, a bottle of his favorite scotch, I think it was, but it was some kind of alcohol. And he left it there at his grave. So there are other ways to do this. You could, you know, go leave something of theirs and, and talk to their grave if you know where their grave is. Um, even if you don't, you can go out in nature by yourself and go to like a beach or a river or something. Like you could do this same ritual without fire. You could do it with water. You could write the letter and you can let the pages go into a creek or a waterfall or a brook same vibration something taking it away you know releasing the energy after you've made the apology and that will help you to start getting your karma going in the right direction now that's not the end of it of course you know that's just the beginning so you have to go watch the other video if you want to see the other steps if you missed those steps i'll link it right up here um the video about clean up your mess that'll tell you the other steps that you do after that one but i just wanted to say this because i got messages from people who have done things to people who are just not around you know um through no you know through death or whatever you know and it's like well what do i do now i can't even you know verbalize this apology but yeah you can still give the apology you just have to do it in a different form under a different kind of energy okay so any of you who um you know wants to use this can it's, it's very very simple like i said you can use it with fire you can use it with water you can use it with earth because you could bury the letter, you know. We always, in, in craft, we use whatever form of the elements that we want to. So we can use fire, we can use water, we can use air, you know. We can use earth. So, you know, setting it on fire and, you know, letting it go in the wind, that's using fire and wind, fire and air. Putting it in a waterfall, that's using water, you know. Put it, burying it somewhere that's using earth so whatever feels more comfortable to you you know and you just kind of do a little you know a little personal ritual you know burying it someplace um may not be the easiest i've found out from doing rituals that burying things is not as easy as you would think <laughs> i felt that out the hard way i had a ritual that called for something to be buried and I'm thinking, okay, you know, I had no tools. I didn't have nothing. I went out there with a spoon. <laughs> this is when I first started doing magic. And my spell called for me to bury whatever it was. And I went outside. I had no utensils. I had never dug in the ground before. And I went out there with a spoon to create the hole to put this thing in the ground. Needless to say, for any of you who've ever tried to do any gardening, this was the hardest task in the world. The ground was too hard. I think it was like winter time, and I don't think that's when you're supposed to do that anyway. I didn't know any of this back then. 
And so I started using different elements because I, the earth element was so difficult for me to navigate. So, you know, that element may be one that is more difficult than the other ones. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time for me to get going. So if you like this video, again, please give it a thumbs up and pass it on to someone else. Likewise, if you would like to get in touch with me, all of my information will be underneath this video. If you would like to become one of my patrons on Patreon, that information will be under this video because on Saturday, I will be doing the next episode of The Witch Trials. On Sunday, we will be doing a live discussion. So if you're interested um, in coming out on Sunday, we're going to be going back to our book, Being Me, Loving You by Marshall Rosenberg. And for this um, particular discussion, I read from pages 31 to 40 something, 46. 31 to 46, okay? So for any of you who are coming, that's where we're going to be at. All right, guys, see you later.